Hello friends, welcome to the second part of the complete series on photo emission spectroscopy. In the previous video, we have seen the basic principles and instrumentation of XPS. If you have missed that video, you can find the link for the first video in description box. Now, let's talk about the spectra obtained from the XPS instrument. We have seen that the instrument gives a plot of kinetic energy versus the number of electrons counted. So, number of electrons counted is plotted in y axis and kinetic energy is plotted in x axis. So now you can see that it starts from the lower kinetic energy in the left and goes to higher kinetic energy in right as normally a graph is plotted. But in most of the modern instruments kinetic energy is converted to binding energy with the formula H nu is equals to binding energy plus kinetic energy plus phi. Therefore, the lower kinetic energy becomes higher binding energy and higher kinetic energy becomes lower binding energy. This means now x axis starts from higher binding energy and end at lower binding energy. In future, we will always use binding energy for the reference. So, graph will be always starting from higher binding energy to lower binding energy in x-axis and the peaks coming at different binding energies can be compared to the actual electronic configuration of the element. For example, here in the image you can see the XPS spectra of nickel and at higher binding energy of 1008 electron volt comes nickel 2s peak. Then at 852 electron volt comes nickel 2p followed by nickel 3s peak at 110 electron volt and finally at 66 electron volt for nickel 3p peaks. This clearly indicates the order of peak appearing in the graph is the exact electronic level or orbital of the element. Also 2s being inner shell it appears at a very high binding energy and as we move to outer electrons binding energy goes on decreasing. Another interesting application of XPS is we can make the energy level diagram of any element and find the position of electron in the orbital. Making of an energy level diagram is a tricky task which we will discuss in upcoming videos. For now, let's stick to the number of signals and peak positions. In some cases, when we have to identify unknown peak, we generally used NIST XPS database of the standard values of the binding energy of pure elements. Here, we have a list of binding energy line position when magnesium X-ray is used and when aluminum X-ray is used. You can easily find the peak position from the graph and from this chart you can identify the elements present in your sample. I will give you the link in description for these charts which you can download for your reference. Now let's try to find the unknown peaks of a sample of iron. Here is the spectra which shows large number of small peaks. So let's start. The peaks at 720 and 707 electron volt corresponds to iron 2p peaks. They are split into two because of spin orbital coupling. Then there are iron 3s and iron 3p peaks at 91 and 53 electron volts respectively. But still we have more peaks. Let's find what are those peaks from our previous table by matching the binding energy. So, the peak at 287 electron volt exactly matches with the carbon 1s peak and peak at 531 electron volt matches with oxygen 1s peak. So, we can also say that sample is contaminated with carbon and oxygen. Carbon and oxygen generally comes from the atmospheric exposure. This means sample was exposed to air. The broad peak at 304 and 553 electron volt are due to the losses of carbon 1s and oxygen 1s electrons. Losses we will discuss in detail in upcoming videos. Also 
oxygen 2s peak is visible at 24 electron volt. Some of the peaks of very low intensities are visible like calcium 2p at 348 electron volt, nitrogen 1s at 400 electron volt and manganese 2p at 643 electron volt. The signal for these peaks are very low but still they are present. Also some small peaks at 781 electron volt and 498 electron volt represents auger peaks. Auger lines are appearing because of energy transfer from one electron to the other electrons during photo emission process. This also we will discuss in detail in next videos. For now we can easily find the number of elements present in our sample just by matching the binding energy of different peaks with the standard values as given in the table. Another important application of XPS is to find the percentage concentration of different components present in the sample. Please note that the XPS is only surface sensitive technology and it gives the percentage concentration of sample surface up to a depth of 10 to 12 nanometers only. So, if surface is different than the bulk, it is better to clean the surface very well before analysis. Cleaning of surface is done by sputtering and annealing, which removes few atomic layers of the surface. Once sample is clean and we measure the XPS spectra, we can calculate the area under each peak. As area is directly related to number of electrons, which indirectly gives the elemental composition of sample. Please note that for calculating area under the peak, we must subtract the background of peak and also the sensitivity factor of each electron should be accounted for the calculation of concentration. The formula for the concentration of any component X can be given as Cx is equals to fraction of Nx to the sum of Ni where N is the number of electrons which is given by intensity I divided by sensitivity factor S for each electron because each electron is not equally sensitive to the cross section of the instrument. In the graph peak area of important components are shown here. So let's calculate the percentage concentration of each. In the graph peak area of important components are shown. For example for carbon it's 40,396, for calcium 1,884, for nitrogen 1,359, oxygen 27,286, manganese 2,563 and for iron 4,913. So, if we have the intensity of carbon 1s peak 40,396 and its sensitivity factor is 0 0.205, then the ratio I by S becomes 197,054. In this way, we can calculate the I by S for each element. And now sum of I by S will be 249,108 and finally we can divide ratio of I by S with the sum of I by S and we can convert it into percentage. So for carbon 1S it comes 79.10%, for oxygen it is 17.39%, nitrogen it is 1.44%, Iron it is 0.52%, calcium it is 1.07% and manganese is 0.49%.
This means with simple calculations, we can find the elemental composition of our sample. So that was all for now. In the next video, we will learn about splitting of the signals due to spin orbital coupling. If you have any doubt, you can write in the comment box and I will try my best to answer those queries. Till that, goodbye and thank you for watching.